Welcome back to this video podcast edition of 12 Days in March. This material was delivered during a series of live lectures at the University of Massachusetts Medical School. In this recording, we review the key features of osmotic diarrhea that you need to know for the USMLE Step 1 exam. As with all presentations, a PDF of this recording is available at the 12 Days website. So let's just do uh, lactose intolerance, and I feel so terrible. Get out, stay out, we don't want your kind here. That's what they say to the poor cow. That is lactose intolerance, and I'm going to get one of those ribbons for cows. All right, so here's your intestine on lactase, and they call it, they don't know, they call it lactase. You and I call it lactase when we're socializing, but on the boards they call it brush border enzyme or disaccharidase, but we don't have to call that when we're friends. But what would happen to your glucose? So if you have a normal lactase, if I give you a lot of lactose and measure your sugar, what will happen? Yeah, the sugar's going to go up. Under normal circumstances, glucose would rise. But what if you don't have any lactase or brush border enzyme or disaccharidase? Okay, lactase deficient, glucose absorption is impaired, and it's called the lactose tolerance test. You give a load of lactose and look and see what the sugar does. Does it go up? Because you need the enzyme to break down lactose, glucose and galactose, to glucose. So if you don't have the enzyme, glucose doesn't go up. That's one nifty little test. And here's the other thing. Lactose deficiency, lacking lactase, it gets you the sugar that's not supposed to come into the colon down here. It's supposed to be all absorbed, and now you have lactose coming into the colon, and the bacteria ferment it. So fermentation is what happens when the sugar comes to the colonic bacteria, and when you ferment, what happens? You create acids, you create hydrogen ions, so you're at, you get diarrhea for sure, and it's an acid pH because you're making these short-chain fatty acids, and you're making hydrogen gas, among other gases. So fermenting sugar, not so good. Okay, and so this guy, I already told you, hydrogen is produced. So same thing, if I give this guy lactose and measure his breath hydrogen, if he doesn't have lactase present, what's going to happen? The hydrogen goes up. It's a lactose hydrogen breath test. Goes up after lactose load. So here's normal, here's abnormal. Here it is again, just pictured. These are all bacteria, right? And here's lactose in, exposed to them. Fermentation. Hydrogen gas, methane, CO2, also so the lactate converted short-chain fatty acids, which lower the pH. So you wind up with a diarrhea and lactose in intolerance. Lactose intolerance, two reasons, right? So you have the sugars that are causing an osmotic load, whoops, sorry, and you get the short-chain fatty acids that are causing a osmotic load. So there's your high osmotic gap in the osmotic diarrheas, low pH, the stool's low pH. This is really, if they give you low pH or a high osmotic gap, it's lactose intolerance. It's the only thing that's really going to do this. Light microscopy, you guys said before, is normal. So in intestinal biopsy, you'd hope that they ask you a lactose intolerance question, and what does the microscopy show? So this is not really a bonus question because there's nothing for you to answer. Again, lactose is not absorbed. It gets fermented. You get hydrogen ions. We take advantage of that when? When do you give something where you have a low pH? Right, <laughs> right? So a cirrhotic, what are you going to do? You're going to give them something that produces hydrogen ions. You want hydrogen ions to absorb ammonia. And again, that's your cirrhotic story, lactulose. Lactulose is a sugar that's not absorbed, right? It's fermented. You create hydrogen ions that bind ammonia. And it's one of the management strategies for hepatic encephalopathy. Okay, so it's using uh, fermentation for good instead of evil. So lactulose. Again, the stool osmotic gap. VIP OMA, we said normal because you're excreting sodium and potassium. So it's a low gap lactose. You have sugar and short chain fatty acids. So it's a high gap. All right, you guys got that one. So that's all I have to say on cows and lactose intolerance. I've included a summary slide on the key features of this topic. Pay particular attention to the different descriptions used by the NBME, including brush border enzyme and disaccharidase deficiency. Note also the four characteristic diagnostic tests with an emphasis on osmotic gap and pH. I do also include, under special notes, a couple of derivatives that are fair game on test day. And that concludes this discussion of osmotic diarrhea for the USMLE Step 1 exam. If you have any questions or concerns, please email me at 12 days. Thank you.